Good day and I would like to welcome you in our lesson 3 which is all about the classification of appetizers. Again, I am your subject teacher. I am Mom Jeannie G. Deshawn. Choosing the right kind of appetizers to be served depends on the kind of dish served in a meal. They should be light in nature so as not to make the customer full without even trying the main course and leaving no more space for dessert. An appetizer is defined as the small amount of food usually taken before the main course to stimulate appetite. And for today's learning goals or learning objectives, at the end of the lesson, you are expected to first is to identify the needed tools and equipment needed in preparing appetizers. Second is to give the classification of appetizers. Third is to cite variety of ingredients used in preparing appetizers. And for the last one is to explain the nutritional value of appetizer. For our activity one, study and try to identify the different classification of appetizers you have seen on your screen. I'm going to give you time to... Think or to identify the different classifications of appetizers posted on the screen. The main function of appetizers is to increase your hunger and prepare you for the main course. The flavors of the appetizers are often coordinated with the flavors of the main dish in a meal because appetizers are the first food that is used to ask to give an idea about the main course. An appetizer is part of a meal that served before the main course. You might serve your dinner guests an appetizer of crab stuffed mushrooms when they first arrive for dinner. Usually, an appetizer it is a small serving of food, just a few bites, meant to be eaten before an entry and often shared by several people. So, if you have noticed, appetizers take less time to prepare, allowing you to get food in front of your guests faster while providing additional time to finalize the main course. In every food preparation, regardless on the dishes that you're going to prepare or cook, it is always important to perform the mise en place. And what is mise en place? Mise en place refers to the gathering, weighing, organizing, and preparing of all needed tools and ingredients before the actual cooking. In short, mise en place is getting everything ready before starting to cook. Mise en place is easy, and being organized and prepared in the kitchen saves time and frustration. Trying to multitask between ingredient preparation and cooking could be a recipe for disaster. Mise en place saves time by having everything ready to combine. It eliminates the chance of culinary disasters that occur from lack of preparation. And another thing, performing mise en place, it saves space on counters. Let us now discuss the history of appetizers. Appetizers were originally introduced by Athenians as a buffet in the early 3rd century BC. They would serve sea urchins, cockles, sturgeon, and garlic. However, they were unpopular to start as these tiny meals were not followed up with a main course leaving everyone hungry and wanting more. It was not until the 19th century that appetizers truly caught on as meals evolved into more of a structured ordeal. The ancient Romans and Greeks are depicted lounging with trays of fresh fruit, wine, olives, and cheese. Their feasting style surely inspired our modern-day appetizers. This included fish and seasoned vegetable also. The main course featured some of the same foods in ever larger quantities. All through history, those who had the means 
to secure large quantities of food and to entertain, have enjoyed stretching the meal time and conversation experience by serving a variety of successive courses, beginning with finger foods, many of which were often on the salty side, to stimulate the appetite. So there is a sense of leisure and abandonment to it all, and certainly of abundance. Now, moving on to the different tools and equipment needed in preparing appetizers. In our first discussion, we learn different kitchen tools and we categorize them as measuring tools, baking tools, cooking tools, mixing tools, and even auxiliary tools. For this day, the tools and equipment that we will learn together are the things that we will be using in preparing appetizers. First kitchen tool is we have the ball cutter. It is a sharp edge scoop for cutting out balls of fruits and vegetables. Although this tool is commonly known as a melon ball cutter, it is versatile or versatile enough to have dozens of other uses in the kitchen. Try it to cut potato balls that you saute until golden brown and use as a border around the platter that holds your Sunday rolls. Use it to make balls of cheese for your next appetizer. Next is a rubber spatula. It is used to scrape off contents of bowls. The rubber spatula, it is an essential multi-purpose kitchen tool that has evolved over time. A rubber spatula is the go-to utensil for such tasks as gently scraping out the contents of bowls without scratching the surface, stirring and blending butters and other mixtures, and gently folding mixtures. We also have channel knife. It is a small hand tool in making garnishes. Channel knives are used mainly for cutting strips of citrus fruit trying for cocktail garnishes. Drawing the knife around the surface forms the spiral shape for the trees. Different knives may cut thicker or thinner channels or wider or narrower channels depending on the design. Next tool is we have spatula. It is used for manipulating foods like spreading. It is an implement with a broad flat Flexible blade used to mix, spread, and lift foods and used for spreading things, especially in cooking and designing cakes. Another tool is we have wire whip. Whisk or cooking whips are cooking utensils that feature a narrow handle on one end and wire loops joined together at the other. The configuration and thickness of the loops varies depending on the type of whisk you use. Whisks are used to either add air into a mixture or thoroughly blend ingredients together. Wire whips or whisks are the prepared kitchen utensils used throughout the world to whip and aerate cream, meringue, eggs, and cereal-like sauces and butter in pans. These are made from professional-grade stainless steel and come in differing lengths. Another tool is we have zester. A zester is a kitchen utensil for obtaining zest from lemons and other citrus fruit. The zest is cut into ribbons, one drawn through each hole. Other tools are also sometimes called zesters because they too are able to separate the zest from a citrus fruit. Can you use a grater as a zester? If you don't have a zester, a cheese grater might seem like a good option. But often, the grates are either too deep or too shallow to efficiently get the zest of, of the citrus. This ultra-fine dice is packed with lemon flavor and can be used in any recipe that calls for lemon zest. 
Next is we have this French knife. It is also known as cook's knife or chef's knife. It is a cutting tool used in food preparation. A chef's knife can help you make fast work of serving healthy fresh fruits and vegetables. A chef's knife, also called a French knife, has a broad, tapered shape and a fine, sharp edge. Its blade ranges in length from 6 to 12 inches and measures at least 1 to 1 and a half inches at the widest point. Aside from chef's knife or French knife, this one is called paring knife. It is a thin-bladed knife intended for coring and paring or peeling fruit, such as apples, as well as slicing small ingredients. It is majorly used for detailed and controlled cutting. A paring knife is a small, all-purpose knife with a plain edge that is ideal for peeling or paring fruits and vegetables and other small or intricate work such as debaining a shrimp, removing the seeds from a jalapeno, skinning or cutting small garnishes. We also have butter curler. A kitchen utensil used to create decorative curls of butter for serving or garnishing food dishes. A butter curler is a kitchen tool designed to produce decorative butter shapes for use in food decoration. It can also be used to make chocolate and wax shavings. In typical use, the material to be cut is chilled slightly while the curler is dipped into hot water to ease the cutting. Another tool is potato masher. It is designed to press potato and other cooked vegetables. A potato masher is a food preparation utensil used to crush cooked food. Its name comes from its most common use, like crushing cooked potatoes for mashed potatoes. This potato masher consists of a handle connected to a mashing head and the handle can either be upright or sideways. Another tool is a kitchen shears. It is a kitchen tool specifically made for food preparation that is more versatile than a standard pair of cutting scissors. A pair of scissors consists of a pair of metal blades pivoted so that the sharpened edges slide against each other when the handles are both opposite to the pivot are closed. Kitchen shears, also known as kitchen scissors, that are intended for cutting and trimming foods. This time, it is a chopping board. A board for cutting fruits and vegetables. A cutting board is a durable board on which to place material for cutting. The kitchen cutting board is commonly used in preparing food. Other types exist. For cutting raw materials such as leather or plastic, kitchen cutting boards are often made of wood or plastic and come in various widths and sizes. For these kitchen utensils, are you familiar? Can anyone guess what kitchen utensil is in the screen? So these are what we call chiller. It is used for keeping cold foods chilled for service. Sometimes, chiller is a machine for cooling something, especially a cold cabinet or refrigerator for keeping stored food a few degrees above freezing. And this one is what we call an oven. It is an enclosed compartment as in a kitchen range for cooking and heating food. An oven is a thermally insulated chamber used for the heating, baking, or drying of a substance and most commonly used for cooking. These are different baked appetizers when we can prepare like cheesy sushini bites, bacon wrap, jalapeno poppers, mini pizza, muffin tin taco pies, and many more. Next is measuring spoon. 
They are used for measuring dry and liquid ingredients in small quantity. A measuring spoon is a spoon used to measure an amount of an ingredient, either liquid or dry when cooking. Measuring spoons may be made of plastic, metal, and other materials, and they are available in many sizes, including the teaspoon and tablespoon. This time is what we call measuring cups. It is used to measure dry ingredients and they come in various sizes and volumes. Measuring cups may be made of plastic, glass, or metal. The standard for measuring cup sizes are 1 cup, 1 half cup, 1 third cup, and 1 fourth cup. With those 4 cup sizes, you can measure dry ingredients for any recipe. Another kitchen tool is what we call a glass measuring cup. It is a container which is usually transparent. It is smooth in the inside with a graduation mark on the outside to read. This is used for measuring liquid ingredients like water and oil. A measuring cup or what we call measuring jug, it is a kitchen utensil used primarily to measure the volume of liquid. For this stainless materials, we call these mixing bowls. These containers have smooth, rounded interior surfaces with no creases to retain some mixtures. Mixing bowls are used for storage, working doors, mixing dry ingredients, mixing salads, organizing, and more. The kitchen needs several bowls in different sizes and a mixing bowl, it is a deep bowl that is particularly well suited for mixing ingredients together in. This comes in many materials such as stainless steel, what, uh, what you have seen in the screen, ceramic, glass, and plastic. Next is a wooden spoon. It is used for mixing ingredients. It is made of wood. In different sizes and different length of the handle. A wooden spoon, it is a spoon that is used for stirring sauces and for mixing ingredients in cooking. It is made of wood and has a long handle. Wooden spoons are generally preferred for cooking because of their versatility. Unlike metal spoons, they can also be safely used without scratching non-stick pans. Another tool is we have kitchen fork. These are implement with two or more prongs used for lifting food to the mouth or holding it when cutting and it is used to combine ingredients. In preparing appetizers, mm -hmm. we enjoy small bites of orders and more with cocktail. It is mm -hmm. ideal for any occasion and these small utensils mm -hmm. make it easy to eat seafoods finger food or appetizers. Another is containers or different containers. It is an object used for or capable of holding a product used in storage, packaging, and shipping. Great appetizers comes with great containers. Shallow container is perfect for appetizers, finger foods, desserts, cut fruits, and more. Next is colander. It is a kitchen utensil used to strain foods. The perforated nature of the colander allows liquid to drain through while retaining the solids inside. A colander is also called a vegetable or pasta strainer in which this utensil separates the solid from the liquid ingredients. Next tool is cooking stove or cooking range. A kitchen stove, often called simply a stove or a cooker, it is a kitchen appliance designed for the purpose of cooking food. Kitchen stoves rely on the application of direct heat for the cooking process and may also contain an oven that is used for baking. And for our last kitchen tool or kitchen equipment, we have refrigerator. It is a device or room that is used to keep things such as food and drinks cold, in which it is also called 
fridge. A refrigerator is a large container which is kept full inside usually by electricity so that the food and drink in it stays fresh. After knowing the different kitchen tools, utensils, and equipment used in preparing the different classification of appetizers, let us now move on to the definition of the word appetizers. They are a small dish of food or a drink taken before a meal or the main course of a meal to stimulate one's appetite. Appetizers are foods which stimulate the appetite through their attractive appearance, fragrance, or appealing flavor. It is a small pieces or portions of highly seasoned food usually served before a meal to induce and stimulate one's appetite. We are now moving on to the nutritional value of appetizers. The nutritional value of appetizers can be found in different ingredients used in a given recipe. Most of the ingredients used in preparing appetizers are foods rich in carbohydrates, fats, protein, vitamins, and mineral. The nutrition facts and nutritional value of appetizers varies greatly depending on the individual item. So, the different nutritional value of appetizers, again, are found in different ingredients used for a certain recipe. Let's now have the classification of appetizers. Appetizers are finger foods usually served prior to a meal or in between meal times, and are also called hors d'oeuvres or starters and may range from the very simple to the very complex depending on the occasion and the time devoted to making them. They are a common accompaniment to aperitifs cocktails served prior to a meal. A good appetizer, whether hot or cold, should be light and served in a small quantities. Fresh vegetables and salads, fruits or meat, or even fish can be made into appetizers. Appetizers should be big on flavor, small on size, and price. For the first classification of appetizers, we have cocktails. They are usually juices of orange, pineapple, grapefruit, or tomatoes served with cold salad dressings. It may be in the form of a fruit or vegetable juice mixed with little alcoholic beverage or seafood like shrimps, crabs, or lobsters served with slightly seasoned sauce. An alcoholic drink consisting of a spirit or spirits mixed with other ingredients such as fruit juice or cream. A cocktail can contain alcohol, sugar, and a bitter or sweet juice. Mixed drinks without alcohol that resemble cocktails are known as mocktails or virgin cocktails. These are some of the kinds of cocktail appetizers. We have oysters and clams on the half shell, Shrimps cocktails or crab meat cocktails. Another kinds of cocktail appetizers are lobster, fruits, or firm flake white fish. For the second classification of appetizers is we have hors d'oeuvres. It is a small portion of highly seasoned foods. It is a combination of canapé, olives, stuffed celery, pickled radishes, and fish. Orders is served on individual plate when guests are seated. Sometimes, this is simply placed on a platter and passed around. Orders are served either cold or hot. They are small one or two bite items that are served before dinner, usually accompanied by cocktails. There's no hard and fast rule, but in general, an order is served before a meal and appetizer is part of a meal. We have the different miscellaneous orders. One is antipasto or what we call an Italian appetizers. And examples of antipasto are cured meats like salami, prosciutto, bologna, boiled ham. We also have seafood items or canned items like sardines or anchovies and 
also we have cheeses like provolone or mozzarella. These are variety of food both hot and cold serve as appetizers. The serving is smaller in unit size or portion size that can be eaten with forks from small plates or with fingers. Aside from seafood items, cured meats or cheeses, we also have hard cooked and stuffed eggs, relishes or what we call raw vegetables, and we also have mushrooms and other vegetables. These are also uh, part of antipasto or Italian appetizers. Another miscellaneous order is what we call bruschetta. It is a slice of Italian bread that is toasted, rubbed with brushed garlic and drizzled with olive oil, served with toppings like canapé. Bruschetta is an antipasto or a starter dish from Italy consisting of grilled bread, rubbed with garlic, and topped with olive oil and sauce. Variations may include different toppings. Another miscellaneous orders are tapas. It is a small food item intended to be eaten with wine or other drinks, usually in bars. They are served in a small portion intended to be eaten immediately. A tapa is an appetizer or snack in Spanish cuisine that may be cold, such as mixed olives and cheese, or hot, such as chupitos, which are buttered fried baby skin. In some bars and restaurants in Spain and across the globe, tapas have evolved into a more sophisticated cuisine. For our fourth miscellaneous orders are what we call caviar. They are salted dough or eggs of the sturgeon. A sturgeon is a kind of fish. Any product labeled caviar must come from sturgeon. Raw from any other fish must be labeled as such white fish caviar. Caviar is considered a delicacy and it is eaten as a garnish or as a spread. The roe can be fresh or pasteurized, with pasteurization reducing its culinary and economic value. Caviar has a special texture as you eat it. The eggs pop gently in your mouth and on your tongue, releasing their flavor that is a delicate mixture of salt and fish, umami and clean, briny sea, and a slight mineral taste. For our last miscellaneous orders, we have Amelie's Bush. It is a tiny appetizer or orders offered to guests seated at their tables either before or after they have ordered from the menu. It is an opportunity to showcase an aspect of the chef's cooking style and talent and to welcome the guests. Anything that can be served in a tiny portion can be served as an amused push like salads, soups, and a little portions of meat, fish, or vegetables with a few drops of sauce and garnish. The chefs do not use a separate category or recipe for these items, but just give a different presentation, garnish, or sauce. In Amnus Bush, consistency is important to any dip. It must not be so thick that it cannot be scooped up without breaking the crocker, or it must be thick enough to stick to the items used as dippers. Thin or soften them by adding mayonnaise, cream, or other appropriate liquid. Sauces and salad dressings can be used as dips. These are served both to prepare the guests for the meal and to offer a glimpse of the chef's style. The term is French and literally means mouth amuser. So that is the meaning of Amuse bush. Another classification of appetizers is we have canapé. They are made of thin slices of bread in different shapes. The bread may be toasted, sauteed in butter, or dipped in a well-seasoned mixture of egg, cheese, fish, or meat, then deep fat fried. 
the larger canapes are termed as zakuskis after the chef zakuski. Canapé is a finger food consisting of three parts. We have base, a spread, or topping, or garnish. They could be served hot or cold. There are no set recipes for the baking of canapé. You may create your own combination of several different colored items on the cut, pieces of bread, toasted or fried, and biscuits and others. So just like what I've said, canapé has different parts. And for the first one is we have the base. Face holds the spread and garnish. Crackers and toes are firmer and give a pleasing texture and crispness to the canapé. Canapé, it is a bite-sized oven face sandwiches, consists of tiny portions of food presented on bases of bread, toes, or pastry easily handled and eaten. Again, canapé consists of three parts, the base, the spread, topping, and garnish. For the first part is the base that holds the spread and the garnish. These are the different suggestions for canapé bases. We have bread cutouts, toast cutouts, and crackers. We also have what we call a melba toast. Tiny and sweetened pastry shells or even tortilla chips that can be used as a base of the canapé. Aside from those mentioned, we also have tiny biscuits, polenta cutouts, and even miniature pancakes. So all of those can be used as a base in preparing canapé. For our second part of canapé is we have the spread. It is placed on top of the base so the garnish sticks to it without falling off. Spreads are added to food to enhance the flavor or even the texture of the food. These are the three types of spreads that can be used in preparing canapé. First is we have the flavored butter. They are made from softened butters with flavorings. Second is we have the flavored cream cheese. These are made from flavored butters except the cream cheese substituted for the butter. Then lastly, we can use meat or fish salad spreads that are made from finely chopped meat or fish that are spreadable. The mixture of cream and butter can be used. Seasons or the seasoning should be checked carefully to make the spread more stimulating to the appetite. For the last part of canapé is we have garnish. Any food item or combination of items placed on top of the spread which usefully give color, design, and texture or flavor accent to the canapé. A garnish is an item or substance used as a decoration or embellishment accompanying a prepared food dish or drink. Many garnishes are not intended to be eaten. Though for some, it is fine to do, but in canapé, all garnishes must be edible. Here are the food items used to decorate canapé. We have vegetables, pickles, and relishes, and the examples are radish slices, pickled onions, tomatoes, olives, chutney, parsley, pickles, asparagus tips, capers, cucumber slices, and pimiento. Under fish, we have smoked oysters, smoked salmon, shrimp caviar, tuna plate, sardines, lobster chunks, or slices. And under meats, we have ham, salami, roast beef, and you can also use chicken or turkey. And then under cheese and eggs, we have provolone or cheddar. We can also use hard-boiled or soft boiled. So those are the different food items that can be used to decorate our canopy. Let us now discuss the different guidelines for assembling canopy. First is good peace and plan is essential. 
In making canapé, especially for large functions, all bases, spreads, and garnishes must be prepared ahead of time so that final assembly may go quickly and smoothly. Again, the word miss and plus is getting everything ready before starting to cook. Now, number two, assemble as close as possible to serving time. Faces quickly become saggy, and spreads and garnishes dry out easily. After placing them in a tray, cover them lightly with plastic and held for a short time under refrigeration. Safe food handling and storage must be observed. For number three, select harmonious flavor combination in spreads and garnish, such as mustard and ham, lemon butter and caviar, pimiento cream cheese and sardines, tuna salad and capers, as well as anchovy butter, hard cooked egg slice, and olive. For number four, make sure that at least one of the ingredients is spicy in flavor, because a bland canapé has a little value as an appetizer. For the fifth guideline is we have use high quality ingredients. Leftover can be used for canapé, but they must be carefully handled and stored to retain freshness. Number six, keep it simple. Simple meat arrangements are more attractive than extravagant ones. And number seven, arrange canapé carefully and attractively on trays. Be sure that canapé hold together and do not fall apart in the customer's hands. Each tray should carry an assortment of flavor and texture so there is something for every taste. So those are the guidelines when we are preparing or assembling canapé. Another classification of appetizers is we have relishes or crudités. These are pickled items which are raw, crisp vegetables such as julienne carrots or celery sticks. Relishes are generally placed before the guest in a slightly deep, boat shaped dish. Relishes or crudités are any of a variety of foods such as pickles, olives, or raw vegetables served with a meal to add flavor or as an appetizer. These are pickled condiment as for use on hot dogs or hamburgers, usually consisting of finely chopped pickled cucumbers with spices, sugar, vinegar, and others. A relish is a cooked and pickled product made of chopped vegetables, Fruits or herbs, and it is a food item typically used as a condiment to enhance a staple. Relishes include two categories. First is we have raw vegetables with tips, and these are the examples of raw vegetables. We have celery, radishes, sashimi, cucumber, cauliflower, green and red pepper, broccoli florets, broccoli stems, cherry tomatoes, carrots, and scallions. Relishes are raw or pickled vegetables that cut into attractive shapes serve as appetizer. Again, these are known as crudités. Cru in French meaning to say these are raw. Okay, so that is the first category of relishes. These are still under the first category of relishes. Now we have dips. These are accompaniment to raw vegetables and sometimes potato chips and crackers. Any mixtures of spreads can be used as dips. Proper consistency is important to any dip. It must not be so thick that it cannot be scooped up without breaking the cracker. And it must be thick enough to stick to the items used as dippers. Thin or soften them by adding mayonnaise, cream, or other appropriate liquid. So, I already mentioned this, and sauces and salad dressings can be used as dips. For the second category of relishes, we have pickled items. 
It includes variety of items like cucumber, pickles, olives, watermelon, pickled peppers, spice beets, and other preserved fruits and vegetables. Beyond the classic cucumbers, other fruits and vegetables that work well for pickles include asparagus, beets, bell peppers, blueberries, cauliflower, carrots, cherries, ginger, grapes, green beans, mushrooms, onions, and a lot, lot more. Another classification of appetizers is we have petite salad. They are small portions and usually display the characteristic found in most salad. Petit salad are dainty, artistically arranged, and consists of a base, body, and garnish. As an appetizer, salad are served in small quantities. The preparation of salad for hors d'oeuvres can be left to one's imagination and the variety is endless and almost everything in the kitchen can be used for them or for preparing petit salad. Another classification of appetizers, we have chips and dips. They are popular accompaniments to potato chips, crackers, and raw vegetables. Proper consistency in the preparation is important for many dips. It must not be so thick. Again, for dips, it must not be so thick that it cannot be scooped up without breaking the chip or crackers. But it must be thick enough to stick to the items used as Deeper. So, those are the principles or the things that we consider when we are preparing dips. Chips and dip are a dish consisting of chips or crisp served with dips. Another classification of appetizers, we have fresh fruits and vegetables. These are the simplest appetizer. Fruits are good appetizers because they give an attractive appearance, fragrance, appealing taste, and delicious flavor. For example, you could serve a platter of thinly sliced cucumbers, chunks of red bell pepper, and baby carrots. Or a fruit tray, consider serving red and green grapes such as well as chunks of mango with toothpicks inserted in them. Since appetizers should always be easy to pick up with the fingers, it should never be greedy or messy, so you need to avoid certain fruits or veggies, for example, chunks of avocado or watermelon that are probably not the best appetizer choices. For the last classification of appetizers, we have anything smaller. These are varieties of appetizers wherein the only requirement is that you keep everything small enough to be picked up with the fingers and eaten with littleness. If you want to serve your favorite homemade sausages, cut them into small pieces, wrap them with a small piece of pastry shell and bake. Or serve your favorite baked sweet potato fries with a mayonnaise based dipping sauce. Individual quiche filled with ham and cheese are another good option. Usually, an appetizer is a small serving of food, just a few bites that meant to be eaten before an entry and often shared by several people. Let's have some reviews. So, for the classification of appetizers, we have cocktails. These are usually juices of orange, pineapple, grapefruit, or tomatoes served with a cold salad dressings. For number two, we have orders. This is a small portion of highly seasoned foods. It is a combination of canapé, olives, top celery, pickled radishes, and fish. For number three is canapé. These are made of thin slices of bread in different shapes. And canapé has three parts. We have the base, the spread, and the garnish. For number four, we have relishes. These are pickled items which are raw, crisp vegetables such as julienne carrots or celery sticks. 
For number 5, we have petite sala. These are small portions and usually display the characteristics found in most salad. And then for number 6, we have the chips and dips that are popular accompaniments to potato chips, crackers, and raw vegetables. For number 7, we have fresh fruits and vegetables in which Fruits are the simplest appetizer. They are good appetizers because they keep an attractive appearance, fragrance, appealing taste, and delicious flavor. Then for the last one is we have anything smaller. These are varieties of appetizers wherein the only requirement is that you keep everything small enough to be picked up with the fingers and eaten with eagerness. So those are the different classification of appetizers. And for the part of canapes or the parts of canapé, we have the base in which it holds the spread and garnish. So we can use crackers and toast that are creamer and give a pleasing texture and crispiness to the canapé. Second part is we have the spreads. It lays on top of the base so the garnish sticks to it without falling off. And then for the third part is we have the garnish. And these are any food item or combination of items placed on top of the spread which usually gives color, design, and texture or flavor accent to the canapé. Next, we have the miscellaneous orders. So, we have antipasto or what we call an Italian appetizer. Bruschetta is an antipasto or starter dish from Italy consisting of grilled bread, rubbed with garlic, and topped with olive oil and salt. Tapas, these are small food items intended to be eaten with wine or other drinks, usually in bars. And then for number four, caviar, these are salted raw or eggs of the sturgeon. And then finally, we have the amis bush, a tiny appetizer or hors d'oeuvres offered to guests seated at their tables either before or after they have ordered from the menu. So that ends our topic for the different classification of appetizers under the lesson 3. So same procedures at the end of our lesson we have different activities that we need to comply or that we need to answer. So we have take me in in which you're going to classify the following ingredients listed according to the parts of canapé and then complete me in which you're going to fill in the blank or blanks with the correct information about the history of appetizer. And then guess what? Identify what is referred in the following statement. Write your answer on the space provided. And for our activity 5, what I have learned, check the appropriate column. Again, so these are the learning competencies that you need to perform. So I can identify the need tools and equipment needed in preparing appetizers. You can give, or I can give the classification of appetizers. I can cite variety of ingredients used in preparing appetizers. So, it will depend on the different classification of appetizers. And I can explain the nutritional value of appetizers. And then, if your answers are all yes, you may now go on with the assessment. And again, if some of your answers are no, read the lesson again.